Don Quixote is not about the character of that name. The character is just a device for holding together different kinds of narrative technique. Terry Eagleton, Literary Theory. Welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. The second mockery of our hero occurs that evening at a dance held by the women of Don Antonio's household. Two of these women are picaresque characters, picaresque in their preferences and prankish, who force Don Quixote to dance until he is dizzy. They were in such urgency to get Don Quixote to dance with them that they thrashed him, not only his body, but his soul. So our hero is milled yet again, left sitting in the middle of the dance floor, thrashed and broken from so much dancing. And he shouts a Latin phrase that alludes to the church's practice of exorcisms. Fugite partes adversae, which means demons be gone. There's something sacrificial about Don Quixote's experiences in Barcelona. The next day, Don Antonio and his wife, Don Quixote and Sancho and two other couples visit the enchanted head. Note that the two additional women are the same ones that thrashed Don Quixote on the dance floor the previous evening. Also note that Don Antonio only informs his two male friends regarding the secret that the head is connected by a tube to the room below, which allows one of his nephews to produce answers to everyone's questions. The head recognizes how many are present, which causes general amazement. At this, there was again much astonishment. At this sheer terror made everyone's hair stand on end. It proceeds to respond with enigmatic wisdom to a series of questions. Mostly, its answers are perogrulladas, or cliches, but occasionally, they are remarkably specific. It tells one woman that the way to be beautiful is to be chaste. It tells another that if she wants to know if her husband loves her, she should consider his actions. It provides the full name of Don Antonio's friend, Don Pedro Noriz. It tells the other man that his firstborn son wishes him dead so he can inherit his fortune. It tells Don Antonio's wife that she will enjoy many years with her husband because his health and his temperance in living promise many years of life. Did you know the most famous scene involving exorcism in Anglo culture is found in the film The Exorcist, 1973? Now, when it's his turn, Don Quixote asks three things which reveal his primary concern in life. First, was what he saw in the cave of Montesinos true or a dream? Second, will Sancho fulfill his promise to give himself lashes? And third, will this bring about the disenchantment of Dulcinea? Regarding the cave of Montesinos, the head remains unclear. There is much to be said. It has a little of everything. Regarding Sancho's lashes, it says they will go slowly, but that the disenchantment of Dulcinea will be properly executed. Don Quixote is most satisfied. Sancho also asks three questions that reveal his very different set of concerns. First, will he govern again? Second, will he escape the poverty of being a squire? And third, will he see his wife and children again? The head's answers are less satisfactory this time, although they are technically correct. Sancho will govern his household because he will return home he will see his wife and children, and because he will cease serving his master, he will escape being a squire. Sancho is unimpressed. Quixotic mission. Which of the following questions does Don Quixote not ask the enchanted head? A, if what he saw in the cave of Montesinos was true or a dream. B, if readers of his novel are pleased by his adventures. C. If Sancho will keep his promises to give himself lashes. Correct answer B. If readers of his novel are pleased by his adventures. The narrator then explains to us in elaborate detail exactly how the enchanted head works. It's a very technical case of disenchantment. One of those moments in Don Quixote when reality trumps fantasy by way of something bordering on a scientific explanation. At the very least, it reads like the ending of a detective novel in which the elaborate efforts of the criminal are revealed in full. Notice that the narrator explains that Thiriamete, 
was particularly keen on revealing the case, which Cidia Mete Benengeli quickly wanted to clarify so as not to keep the whole world in suspense, believing that some magical and extraordinary mystery was involved in the aforementioned head. Most amazing here is the fact that immediately after the technical explanation, Cid Amete goes on to explain that Don Antonio's enchanted head brought him into conflict with the Inquisition. And Cidia Mete says more, this marvelous machine lasted up to 10 or 12 days, but after news spread throughout the city that Don Antonio had in his house an enchanted head, which responded to all those who questioned it, fearing this would reach the ears of the vigilant sentinels of our faith, and having declared the case to our Lord Inquisitors, these ordered him to disassemble it and to cease and desist, lest the ignorant commoner not be scandalized. Wow, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. This is an amazing passage that reveals the general power of religious authority in Spain at that time, as well as the paranoid, vindictive, and destructive nature of many of the individuals living under its surveillance. That's all for now. Join me next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.